Ah, oh, you keep asking me to pick favorites. Like, how do I pick among my children? We've got velvet, if you want velvet. Um, of course, there's always studded and spikes. If you're like just gonna be a little fun out night out, you gotta have something like this. Well, these are, you know, just the good classic Gucci slingback fur right there. That's why they're backwards though, you gotta see the fur. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, welcome to my home on the Upper East Side. I'm Wesley Moon and I'm an interior designer here in Manhattan. You are in my apartment on Park Avenue. I've designed this apartment specifically for me. My whole brand is that I design homes just for each client. I don't have a branded look per se. So when it came to my own home, it's the same thing. So this is very different than any project I've ever done. I looked inside, figured out what it is I wanted to do. I took inspiration from all my favorite things. In this case, it was mainly Europe. I looked to old world Europe, but I wanted to make it modern and contemporary, and I wanted to make it New York and urban. So I kind of put this whole thing together with all of that in mind. So right now we're in what I call the gallery. So basically it's a room that's in the middle of the apartment and didn't have another purpose. So um, there is a little foyer when you first walk in and then there's this space where I wanted to hang some of my best pieces of art and just have this as a kind of landing spot where you can take off your shoes, you can put down your keys. But I also find at the end of the night when people are leaving, somehow we always manage just on this bench there in the stools, finishing up a little drink, having a little more gossip. Um, one of my favorite pieces in this room is this Touloupier by Matthew Solomon. Um, and it's ceramic. Uh, it's stunning. It holds 24 tulips. Uh, or any kind of flower you want, I guess, but it was meant to be for tulips. So this is a 19th century French gilded table that I found at an antiques gallery in England, though it is French. Um, and I just wanted to have just a little bit of a unexpected, like Baroque moment right here in the entry when you come in. Um, and of course that's paired with this very contemporary wall hung console that I designed and uh, the top was done by an Eglamaze artist named Miriam Elner, floats on the wall and there, I love the contrast between the two. For the rug, instead of doing like a sisal or a wool, I ended up doing this woven leather rug from Lance Wovens, which gives you that texture, but it's a little bit more elevated than like a regular sisal. For the walls, um, did this pulled plaster that's kind of burnished, has a little bit of sheen to it and it just adds that texture, but I still wanted to let the artwork pop in here, so I kept it white, but I couldn't do just a plain white wall. That just wouldn't be me. So this is where I always joke that I was inspired by the Vatican, but it's only kind of a joke because when I first went to the Vatican, I was, it just struck me that they used so many different types of stone together, and it was amazing how they worked. And now, you know, today I always feel like people use one stone for like everything. So. I wanted to mix. So here I created my own uh, door profiles out of Byzantine pink onyx and paired them with a marble called Opera d'Arte on the floor. These are two solid slabs that we did a book match and then this flows on into the powder room. Now for the artwork on the walls, uh, I guess if I had to pick two of my favorites, one is this Robert Polidori photograph. It's probably the most valuable in the room, but my favorite is this Micheline Thomas, which is actually probably going to be the most valuable soon. Uh, she is the hottest artist of the moment right now. You've seen her on the cover of Elle Decor. You've seen her in Gallery Magazine, Arc Digest. But I had this just before she was there. This apartment was just a plain white box. So the last renovation was done in 1977 when white formica cabinets and granite countertops were the thing. Uh, every bit of molding or 
architectural detail from the original uh, Art Modern building had been completely stripped away. The original fireplace had been removed. So it was just very simple white box and that was kind of a good thing. There are always many challenges when you take on a renovation of the scale because we literally gutted everything. There's not one thing that you see in this apartment that was here before. <music> So off the gallery is the living room. Um, this room was really inspired by the restaurant in La Reserve in Paris, um, which has gilded leather walls. This is a wallpaper that is from Studio E wallpapers. Um, and it is, we came up with this color together to kind of evoke an old gilding kind of feeling. The room at night just really glows. I wanted to panel the room out just to kind of divide it up and make it really a little more interesting. So we did three different patterns. You can see there's this, which is kind of a contemporary version of a floral. And then there's this one and then up here, which feels a little like shagreen. So they're all in the same colorways. It's just how they were used. So over here is one of the first pieces of art that I ever bought. Uh, this is a watercolor by Kelly Falzon, and it is the opening scene of 9 to 5, and that's Dolly Parton in the middle. It's the biggest watercolor I've ever seen, um, so I've had that the longest. In this corner, I really wanted to create just that cozy spot where everybody wants to go, and it's worked so far. This is like the first place everyone gravitates to. I kind of joke and call it Opium Den. Um, so it's just a little built-in sofa and at night you have the light underneath and then I took like all of my favorite little pieces of art that are just things that I've collected from traveling and they're just things I love and just threw them on the wall. So the fireplace, I uh, worked with Benjamin Wiener at Cocobolo Gallery, who's an amazing ceramicist, uh, to create this mantle which is a little inspired by an old French mantle, but kind of taking an art modern twist on it uh, to, to honor the building. And um, so we created this fireplace. And then over the fireplace is really a glorious piece of art. So this is by Michael Mapes. Um, his work is like this. He, you know, deconstructs pieces. And so this is a portrait of Queen Elizabeth I which I commissioned um, and it is uh, after a Dutch master painting. So basically he, if you look closely, you'll see there's the whole Tudor dynasty is in there and everything in here has something to do with her reign. But to personalize it for me, my grandmother's name was also Elizabeth. So he even included a photograph of her in here as well as her engagement ring, which I got when she passed away, but I can't wear it, so it's been sitting in a safe. So this way I can like look at it every day. And then a couple of Halloweens ago, I dressed up like Queen Elizabeth I, and he actually included a photograph, a couple of photographs of me dressed up like her. So it really personalized it. But when you get in there, it's like every time I look at it, I see something completely different, and I love it. It's a living piece to me. So this area rug is a custom rug made by Holland and Sherry. It's silk, but the design is kind of an extracted uh, version of the pink onyx that I used on the casings. And then we did just a really kind of amorphic shape to the edges. I wanted it to feel like it was just sort of poured out on the floor. And then this is a custom sofa. I wanted to have one side open sort of to the view and to the room. I mean, the whole idea is that this could be one big seating area for a big group, or it could divide up into smaller seating areas um, that would be more intimate. So this sofa, uh, I custom designed the sofa, and this is an Atoyin Cellars fabric, which Holland and Sherry embroidered and did this design across the bottom that you know we developed together and basically it looks like a skyline and i think it kind of in a way evokes the skyline that you see out of the corner windows so then over here is the dining room i like opened this uh, doorway up much larger than it was to begin with and originally it was kind of a half octagon so there were angles on the corners and I wanted to create this panoramic effect and I knew I wanted to do a mural wallpaper so I rounded it out to create these curved walls uh, like a cyclorama and then to accentuate that we did these 
oval steps in the ceiling. This chandelier is a magnificent piece of art by Eve Kaplan. It's gilded ceramic. And I love the fact that it has both electric lights as well as candles. So you can dine by candlelight. So this wallpaper mural is totally custom, collaborated with de Gournay to create this. It's based on Sicily. I love how Sicily is such a melting pot and has such a rich history. So here you find a Baroque church, you know, it's kind of still in the countryside. You see Mount Vesuvius erupting in the background, but it's all done on this gilded paper. So the paint, the painted portion is matte, and then you have the gilding in the back. So at night, when the candlelight's on, it creates this 3D effect that just looks like you could stick your hand into the wallpaper. It greatly expands the size of the room, but it's just magnificent to look at. I would say my travels are definitely what's inspired me most. It sounds a little cliche, but it's true. I mean, I grew up in rural Georgia, so I didn't get to see a lot until I was older. And uh, once I started traveling, I started to see so much that was out there that I just had only read about. But you don't really realize how young America is. And then you go to Europe and you see these things you've been studying and you're like, wow, that's been there for 500 years and yet it looks so contemporary today. So those are the things I tried to pull from. What would be applicable today, but still have that provenance and a classical background to it. So this is in the library. Um, this is where I broke through and I put in these steel doors. I wanted to use clear glass so that you don't lose the light and the air. And that way you would have sound privacy if someone's in here watching TV. It's the only place with the TV in the whole house. But it also converts to a guest room. So that's why I have these beautiful drapery panels from Rosemary Hall Garden, ombre. And uh, you can close those and get that privacy that you need. In this room, if I had to pick my favorite thing, of course, it's this piece of artwork by Samuel Hatmaker, which is Dolly Parton rendered in Legos. Legos, when I was a kid, was the only thing I played with. So when I saw his work, which he does, uh, he's done a whole series of like powerful women or celebrities out of Legos. And of course I picked Dolly because I'm a Dolly freak. I've always loved Dolly, but I think it got, heightened when I was in uh, my freshman year of college when I took a trip to Dollywood during Dolly days and she was actually there and she spoke to me twice while I was there and uh, so I just really fell in love with her but what I love about her is her her whole story and just her personality and the things that everybody loves about Dolly but I always kind of liken it a little to myself. It's like, she always says that her look is a country girl's idea of glamor. And I think if you look at this apartment, it's a country boy's idea of glamor. So I kind of relate to her in that way. So welcome to the kitchen. I divided the space to where this side is a bar and then this side is for cooking. So obviously the bar side gets a little more use. Um, there is a cooktop here. I have managed to boil water to make tea on it. And uh, this I'm sorry, is- sorry, is that all you do? <laughs> that's about all I've done so far. And then this is one of my, another one of my favorite pieces of art. Uh, this is a Maria Berrio piece that I got many, many years ago and just love it. So she reigns over the unused cooktop. Um, and then this is my refrigerator and I, you know, have a service door that I wanted to conceal. So in here is the service door, which is just the back door for deliveries, taking the trash in and out. So if you don't cook, what do you keep in your fridge? Champagne, <laughs> lots of champagne. So in here's my powder room, little jewel box. Uh, I talked about earlier how the slab material of the floor went in there and then I designed this sink in AutoCAD and had it carved out of a solid block of pink onyx. So that's my little floating onyx sink. But I also needed storage in here for extra toilet paper. So I made this one where it opens. Oh, and this opens too. <laughs> Living in the space age, my new me toilets from Kohler. Where do you get black toilet paper? Amazon.com, where else? I live here alone, so I don't have a lot of use for doors, but when I do have guests, I wanted to be able to close things off. So I created 
these doors that are hidden out of the onyx so that I can have a primary suite all to myself. So this is my bedroom, which I completely upholstered. I wanted it to be pin drop silent, except for you can hear that. <laughs> but um, so everything is upholstered. Everything's backed with lamb's wool batting. So this is fabric by Toyin Sellers with a metallic thread through it. This is Fortuny. This is a remnant from an antique tapestry, which I had an artist like throw some gold on, but all of it is backed and upholstered. So at night, you don't hear a thing. Um, and then this is my bed. And I'm really simple when it comes to making a bed. I don't want to deal with pillows at night or anything like that. So sorry, it's not that fancy. These are, uh, this is a pair of roosters that I found in an antique store in Atlanta, where I'm from. They're from the 50s and they used to be shiny. Uh, they were, they're gilded. But then um, I lived in an apartment and had them on a windowsill and they completely oxidized. But I kind of like them like this. So this is a Fornicetti cabinet. Um, I just fell in love with it. It's a, like a panoramic scene of Rome, but, um, and then my grandmother sits on top. But of course, you know, I do love to throw dinner parties. I don't cook, but I can plate, like I can really plate and um, I can present. So this is actually all like serving ware. It's so not that presentable, but it's all stuff for, the dining table and then my whole dresser is also full of like linens and placemats and all those sorts of things that you need when you're entertaining. So where are your actual clothes? Uh, let's go this way. So this is the dressing room. I may have a problem. I also have a clone problem as you pointed out. So I really wanted a place to get dressed in the morning. Uh, I was able to take this little bit of space away from uh, another room and carve this out and just make a great place to not have my clothes just shoved in. So it's all right here, tip of my fingertips. Um, oh, and one of the things I love the best is my LG Styler. It's like the least glamorous thing, except it's a steam locker. So I can put my clothes in the day before when I wake up, they're fresh and steamed and I don't have to deal with that. I think one of my favorite pieces right now is this Saint Laurent jacket. I was actually photographed in this for the Architectural Digest article. Um, I love that. And I've really been digging this really fun hoodie that I've been wearing a lot. Well, now it's getting warm, thank God, but I love that. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.